So every football event that we host and organize is an important milestone for us to uh, practice, test our plans, and that's no different for the Arabian Gulf Cup and the FIFA Club World Cup that were played at the end of 2019. They were two very invaluable uh, uh, test events for us. Uh, they were played back to back, so that was 23 days of football, which is only five days less than the World Cup in 2022. Uh, we were able to test a lot of the plans that we have put down on paper, all the operational plans, whether they're within the venue, outside of the venue, we were able to test our um, transportation plans, working together hand in hand with the security. And uh, the lessons learned for us were just uh, immense. Well, luckily we had a lot of fans that attended uh, both events. We had around 50,000 fans travel from abroad for the FIFA Club World Cup. We were able to test um, our first fan zone. There was a lot of questions being asked about uh, um, the success of fan zones. We learned a lot from the fan zone that we uh, had put in place. One thing that we want to make sure is that we make our fan zones bigger for the next events. Uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, FIFA Fan Fest uh, um, during the World Cup in 22, we're going to have a lot of fan activation areas in 2022. So it's very important for us to gauge fans, uh, their experiences, the transportation to getting to these fan activation areas. Is it easy? Um, and one thing we need to make sure is that they're very accessible to them. Working hand in hand with security, we don't see that there's a difference. We're one organizing body. Security is very important to make sure that everything is safe and secure for the fans. They need to be fully integrated within our operational plans. And uh, it worked very well in the past two events. When it comes uh, to the question of alcohol, this is a question that's often asked about us. Um, we've said this many times before, alcohol is not part of uh, our culture. However, hospitality is part of our culture. We're very hospitable people and we understand that alcohol um, is a part of uh, many people's culture. So alcohol is available and we've said for the World Cup we're going to make sure that it's more readily available for fans. So integrating it into um, specific designated areas, whether they're in fan zones, fan activation areas or, or official FIFA fan fests are things that we're looking into. We've seen that in the FIFA Club World Cup 2019, alcohol was available in the fan zone and uh, the, the fan zone in itself was uh, very successful. In terms of uh, um, gaining experience from other major events around the world, we've been sending uh, team members um, ever since 2012, uh, the Euros that happened in Poland and Ukraine. We've sent people to the Euros in 2016, World Cup 2014 in Brazil, World Cup 2018 in Russia. In fact, we sent over 180 people uh, to the World Cup in Russia, which was a, a great learning experience for many people that have been able to apply their skills here. So this coming, uh, this coming summer, 2020, we've got the Olympics in Tokyo. We've got Copa America um, in uh, Argentina and Colombia. We've also got the Euros, so we'll be sending a big contingent of people to all these events to make sure we also capitalize on all the previous experience that we've gained. And uh, as it's shown us in the past, what people gain and what they learn in these events is uh, something that will really benefit us uh, going forward. I believe that the best uh, preparation for people working well together is during the tournaments and we could see that slowly we've been integrating with members of FIFA. We started off in the uh, um, Arabian Gulf Cup, uh, furthermore we cemented that at the FIFA Club World Cup and going forward any major event that happens here in Qatar, uh, a football tournament, will be handled uh, predominantly by the JV that's been set up between us and FIFA and we believe that's the best model going forward in preparation for the World Cup in 2022. For me, I've been on this project for over 10 years now. I started on, uh, on the, in 2009, May of 2009. Um, we were still in the bidding uh, stages. Uh, then we won the bid 
in December of 2010, and I remember feeling that there's still 12 years to go, and, and to know that we're 1,000 days away, there's a certain excitement, certain anxiety. Uh, we see the plans coming to place. We're very proud with where we've come in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the stadiums. Uh, we're you know, on track with all of that. But when it comes to getting closer and closer to a, uh, you know, the World Cup, it's, it's, it's a mix, it's mixed emotions. It's a, it's a bag of mixed emotions.